Hello crew, have you ever imagined yourself traveling aboard a sailboat, being paid and learning new skills? We're gonna show how you can do it in this video. We are George and Diego. We quit our jobs to renew a tiny 50-year-old sailboat to live on the sea. Once we put ourselves out there, life made its turns and we moved to a more comfortable home, just to lose it a few months later to the biggest hurricane in history. We were already in love with boat life, and as stubborn sailors we are, we didn't give up. 20,000 nautical miles later, here we are in a forgettable trip, following our dreams how far further from where we started. Subscribe and join our life at sea. For you guys that have been following our last videos, you might know we are sailing aboard a super yacht for a few months, but this is not our regular job, we are not the most experienced to talk about it, so we invited our friend Paulo to talk a little bit more about this, ca this career. He's been working on sailboats for more than 10 years now, he, tr he worked in a many different boats, so I think he's the best person to tell you a little bit about it. Hey Paulo, thank you so much my man. So, uh... <laughs> thank you man, for coming with us. Please tell us to, to our viewers a bit of our story. I know a lot about it already, but please share it us. <laughs> I have a little bit knowledge of boats, of uh, parts, because I start, I, I live in Ilha Bella before, and then I sail only in small boats like uh, Hobby Cats, 14, you know, not, not big boats. But I, I work for maybe two years or two years and a half in one big store for boats in Brazil. There I learned more about the industry, I learned, I learned about parts, about electronics, engines, boats in general. But my dream is always sailing, my dream is always be a captain. So one day I have opportunity, uh, one boat who I know, the owner, uh, the owner I know, the, the ex-captain before in Ilha Bella, need a, a deck hand. He's uh, a guy for clean, for helping everything. Almost the deck hand. The name, how the name is said, is the guy who help in the deck. But normally in the boat, so you're able to help in everything. That's also the the best way. And then I starting this sailing boat in Brazil. It's a uh, one one boat, 82 feet. They oh, call Carabelli 82, one wood schooner. It's a big one. Yes, uh, I starting uh, from Brazil. It's a big boat, you know, 82 feet, 82 feet. And then I start cleaning, make varnish, polish. And then the owner of this boat, for my luck, is really nice guy. He be my friend. And then he teach me. He he helped me to make my first courses in Brazil the, for, for be skipper, but uh, I worked for him for maybe one year and a half. Just let me tell something to these guys. Yeah. You don't know Paulo, but Paulo is uh, full energy. He never stops. He's really into uh, <laughs> be doing very energetic. So I'm sure you did really well on your first no first job. Well, I think so much. I, I, I always try. The owner is the best guy to say that. But we, we have a very good relationship to them until today, so I imagine it's not too bad. <laughs> I meet one other sailing boat in Brazil, it's a 105 feet sailing boat classic from 1923. It's a beautiful one of my favorite boats I have worked. I learned a lot, it's a nice captain. I don't know if you can say the name, it's a, but for whose know is one classic boat in Brazil from 1923, one Harry Schoff. Maybe the most famous boat in Brazil. Maybe the most famous boat <laughs> in Brazil. And uh, I have very good luck because the captain is a lovely guy. The, the family who I work with also, the owner, and then the people, the engineer. is the engineer, I can say the name is Miguel. <laughs> He's a very nice engineer. One of my, how I say the professors, professor, the teacher, like the a, tutors, a, a, the tutor, yeah, the guy who teach me everything about engineering, and then after this boat we start to sail more out of Brazil. We go to Caribe to to run uh, racing because it's a very racing boat, classic regattas, and then we 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 run in Brazil the Rolex Cup. We we be in Punta del Este for. Uh, South Atlantic Rolex uh, Cup. Then uh, we move to later. We go to Caribe. We went in Caribe to sailing uh, Heineken regatta, uh, Antigua Classic Week, uh, some regattas in Caribe. 
and then this give me the big vision about the the yacht world so with that guys that uh, sailing boat i start to meet in other boats meeting other types of job in a boat out of brazil and then i decide deliver the boat back to to Ilha Bela, and then there I quit to try a different life, a different boat, uh, new opportunities in Mallorca, in Spain. And then many boats, blah, 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 blah. but yeah. you go back there. So I'm there, I'm in my mid-twenties and I, I like boats and I want to pursue this career working on, on boats. What's the minimum skills and uh, certifications, is there something like that no. or what kind of personality should I have for that? So well, I first go answer your question about the personality. The personality, in my opinion, is uh, one of the most important things for who want to work in a boat like this. You need to like to live in community and respect each other and understand the people are really different. For example, here in my in the boat where I work now, it's uh, I have you work with people for many countries and also in other boats. Like for example, now we have you guys also Brazilian like me, but we have you Portuguese, Holland, Belgians, uh, French. We can work with people. I work with Russians. I work with people from everywhere. And we need to understand the culture is different. We need to respect the the personality of everybody also. And for me, the most important when I go work in a boat, I go contract somebody to work with me. I need the people know we need to work as a family. So inside of the boat, we need to have that type of respect of each other. When you are in the night and you're sailing, you need to care about the things and I need to trust you because my life is in your hands in this moment. So this is the, the very important. Okay, but for who want to start, today we have some basic, some basic course. In the world, normally, the insurance of the boat is who, who... Tell the rules. Tell the rules. And then you need to make some courses, like obligatory. The basic one now is the STCW, the STCW Night 5 is the probably the most important in the basic way the chef who cook need have the deck hand the bosun the first officer the engineer the captain there's a major position that course everybody should have it's stcw night five he talk basically about the safety on board in case of fighting he teach you how fighting fighting he teach you how position your boat in the wind in case of fighting how prepare for abandon the boat in the last situation. So it's, a, it's much more than this, I say the only the basic. And then um, it's not a course, but one exam you need to do, one doctor, one medical exam is NG1. He go uh, see if you have uh, good conditions to work, like your vision, uh, if you hear okay. So they test your body for see how, how you are. And also, because if you later have a problem, they know if you have this previous or after the job. And then, depend how you go in your career. For example, if you are deckhand, what's your goal when you are in the future? You want to stay always as a deckhand? I know guys who like stay as a deckhand. If you go, you want to go more than this, depend what position. For example, if you have a stewardess, they make a course of hospitalities, uh, uh, manage, because many times the stewards manage the the uniforms because heavy boats. We have only six crew here, but heavy boats sometimes have 30, 50 crews on board. So on board, so it, it have a lot of courses you can do. A chef and have it to do a uh, food and hygiene. So uh, the, the chef, the cooking sh uh, courses like also. You also need to make the, the STCW night five. Heavy, I, I not the best to say the, about the course for stewards and uh, and the um, chef because it's uh, a little bit away of my. So the people don't know. Tell us what the uh, the basic positions. In okay, a boat. the basic positions in a boat is when I start to, I can't say the lowest, but the most uh, normal is deck hand, stewardess, chef, or cooking, cook stewardess. Is, uh, in some boats you can have the bosun, the first officer, the engineer, and the captain. This is almost the, the basic positions. Uh, you have the... And uh, usually you start either as a deckhand or as a steward. That's the entry. Exactly. Entry yeah. I started years ago as a deckhand. So. And a deckhand, 
it's uh, they expect me to know how to paint, how to clean. So that's yeah. You make it, uh, for deck hands in the internet, like he, for example, if you go work in Europe, man, you go make one course, have one course very nice. They say this uh, efficient deck hand. So that course will teach you the basic things about clean, what products you can use, because a boat you can't use any products, you know? If no, you go damage the paint, you go damage the tick. So they teach you the basic things for to do. They, then you, 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 you um, how scrub, how clean, how make varnish. So this, the paint, too much about the interest of the person, there, where he want to go. Is there a website people can look at? The have some uh, have some websites to uh, from the schools who give you the directions in your career. We're gonna put some links. We're gonna put some links yes. here about the schools and some courses. So check a take a look at the description of the video, and there are some links there for you. So yeah, I'm there. I'm a deck hand, but I want to be a captain. Okay, for be a captain is a long way. <laughs> well, I I I, uh, I explain my my way. I started as a, a deck hand in Brazil, and then later I be interested about part of the job from engineer. I don't I, I can't say it for be a captain. You didn't know about engineering, but. Uh, I, I think it's a good way. So I learned first a little bit of engineering things, working, helping Miguel, helping the engineer in the boat I worked before and be like his second engineer. And then after this, in my case, yeah, I decided to go to the engineer courses. And then also, but also before I, I, I finished my engineer courses in Europe, um, I make some courses important to do. The minimum I think you need to do for be a captain today in the in the industry, you need to have the yacht master. is a very good course. It's called yacht master offshore. So I make this course, and then after this course, um, I I start to practice. And in my case, how I make this. I go for one small company in Mallorca, they make day charters and they need just a, a captain for a day. They pay one, one specific money for a day work as a captain and then they give you many different types of boats. So I, I work in a sailing boat, uh, 45 feet, 50 feet, catamarans. 54 feet, catamarans, monohulls, I work in monohulls also. And then you need a, you need a really, because for be a captain, nobody gonna put you in the wheel and they said, oh, now I'm gonna teach you that. So you need really want to do and they have a lot of attention with the guys who have around the good captains. Take the good captains who have around you and then and then see what they do, ask help sometimes, but one moment you're gonna need to give you the first step and then it's your risk, so. <laughs> it's kinda, it's, you have to build up. You this. need to build up, yeah. And then the basic course we have, everybody who start to, you want to be a captain, in my opinion, is the MCA course now, is a uh, yacht master offshore. Right. But it just, it's just the beginning, you know, like it's, you don't think you go make that course and be a, a captain in a big boat like that, you know, that boat, for example, the license is not everything. The license said, oh, you can be a captain in a boat with uh, 200 tons. That whole boat here have 120 tons. But uh, it's not easy, you know. The boat is really difficult to drive, really difficult to maneuver. You need to consider a lot of things. Starting, a, start as a deck hand, uh, make some jobs with your engineer, see how the engineer of the boat works, and uh, starting small boats. I want to go back to your story, but one last question with this is just like, is there a better place to start? Better place to to look for a job? Is there, is there like big uh, cities that it's? Uh, yeah. Like have hot some spots. places we yeah the hot spots never be there uh, but have Fort Lauderdale is the people know how, how a nice place United to States. find a good United United States you you because they have a lot of boats so that place have good concentrations of boats good concentrations of uh, works available normally for who won't start like we call the green green uh, works or green deck hands. Um, you go make the dock walk. The dock walk is probably you print your CV, you go in the marinas and go boat by boat to see the guys work. Hey guys, see if they have a moment. Say, oh, I would like to leave, let my CV and then have Fort Lauderdale. Where I live is uh, Palma de Mallorca in Spain. 
for me is uh, one of the best places in Europe because Palma de Mallorca is really strategic for the boats who come to sailing Mediterranean and everybody normally stop there and then there's a huge number of uh, boats, any type of boats, sailing boats, motor yachts, charter boats, for who want to make money, for example, charter boats is the best option because you go work like crazy. The boat, uh, you take the gas, you go sailing, and then you work uh, full time, and then when you back to the port, sometimes have you only some they contract some people to help to clean the boat and new guests come and you go again but the guests let good uh, tips and then uh, you make money France you have uh, Monaco Brazil I think uh, you have uh, Ilha Bela it's a very good place to start because have uh, a lot of boats there but uh, we need to understand something in Brazil the 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 boat is small the, you don't have it like in, out of Brazil in, 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 in Europe it's, it's, it's giant the industry, it's really, Brazil is a nano industry, you can start for take some uh, experience, but the best way is learning English, you know, my English is not too good, but uh, I have a few years uh, working. In, in Caribbean, it will be San Martin, Antigua? In, Car in Caribbean, San Martin for sure, uh, Antigua, in the, but then it's seasonal, yeah, you know, yeah. you need to know where is the time where all the boats come from Europe yeah, to Caribbean. So March, it, Exactly, April. exactly, when have the classic regattas, like in Antigua and San Martin for the Heineken regatta, that's the moment many people who don't found the job in Europe, including the crew, they fly to 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 uh, Caribbean to found the job. And uh, uh, let's say I'm very good with painting and woodworking, but I don't know how to sail. Is this a problem? Do I need to know how to sail? Not necessary no to sailing, but in my opinion, you need to like it. Now, many people come just for make money. Okay, you make one season, two season, and you give up. But uh, uh, not really necessary. It depends. Some boats. The, you need a deck and the deck ne never go big boats for example they need a deck who the carpenter so it's a deck carpenter the guy who go make varnish who care about wood things paint but he never go operate the sails you don't need properly sailing have interesting and then when you found the job you need to understand what your job want from you if you want to sailing then you're gonna need to learn mm -hmm. uh, they want you make a varnish, you go study what's the best varnish, what's the treatment for wood, how many layers of, of varnish you need to give. So heavy in that industry, I work in a boat, one boat have 23 crew and have one guy, he's only for make paint in the boat. Okay, so now the question everybody wants to hear and everybody's thinking, how much money can I, I, can I make working <laughs> on boats? Well, I'm not asking your salary. I just want to know. Okay, uh, okay. I can making. I can explain in general way. Well, we have some standard salaries in the industry, you know, like. But these variate a lot. So the variation go your knowledge, what you can, what plus you can put in your in your job. So one normal deck hand in Europe. I say in Europe because I'm more. It's more my yeah. my place. So in Europe. When, when deck hand he can start, depending of the size of the boat, but in medium, we can say like for 100, 150, 100 to 150 feet boats, he starts between the salary, lowest salary. Can have, maybe have 2,000 euros, but it's not normal. The lowest, lowest 2,500 euros for one deck hand, and then depending of the, the knowledge of that guy and the, how this guy work, he can be promoted and uh, receive 3,000, 3,500, have a boat to include in, pay 4,000 euros as a deckhand position and then in I can, big boats. And I can make some extra if tips. Uh, yes, if you work as a charter boat, for example, I work one big period when I before I need to make some money, uh, working boats uh, like that one, we have here 60 meters boats, and then that boat charter boats who they they rent the boat a week, like one week can cost 250, 300 thousand euros a week, <laughs> and then the, the that guys normally have a, they they give you 10 percent or 20 percent of the price they rent so if they you they rent a boat of 250,000 euros a week they go give you for a week 
25,000 euros and this money will be shared between the crew. Wow. One boat like that one we have here, they probably have between 20 and 25 uh, crew inside. It's, it's 1,000 euros more for week wow. for each crew, so it uh, has a big variation. And then you have the different positions, a bossu, He's a guy with a good knowledge, so he makes some course. So also he invests a lot in his, for example, you, may, you need to make some course. In that course, you go make, you go pay, you go pay uh, 2,000 euros, 3,000 euros in one course in the future. But it, it is it's for after, you, you, you can go only with the basic course, make your money and then use your money yeah, as investment. No, yeah. And then you grow up your salary also, no? And like the, he, and uh, just uh, to put a, about so I'm a captain of a big boat. I'm a captain of a 200 feet boat. So, 250 boats. So that how how much money? Oh, okay. That boat here, it's also Your guess, have yeah. a big variation. Yes. No, we have one uh, like a tabela. A table. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a standard, but how is it have big variation? That guys can make between eight thousand euros to fifteen thousand euros wow. in boats with. 250, uh, 250 feet, for example, you go for more than 10,000 for sure. And then the engineer also have that same variation. So one engineer in one boat with 60 meters, he make money between eight to 15,000, depending a lot of the boat, the owner, the type of, uh, of uh, things he need to do. So tell us a bit more what kind of boats you, you work on these 10 years. Well, I start in sailing boats, but I also work in big, big yachts, like a 60 meters, 70 meters motor yachts, when we have like 30, 35 crew on board. So... You're the guy who was polishing the thing? I polish in all the days, in the <laughs> beginning of my, my, my professional life in Europe. And then I need to make a lot of money. I take a charter boat and then I be all the day. Wake up in the morning, we go dry the boat for the guests don't see the boat wet. And then you dry the boat, later go. So the life can be very hard, you know. Imagine you have thousands of things in knots and you need polishing all the time. So we polish, we start the day dry, polishing all the day in the sun, you there. Reflecting, yeah, you need good, good sunglasses because reflect everything and then you polish, let everything bright. Can't have the mark of one drop of water. And then, uh, well, and then I work in big, maybe some of the biggest uh, sailing boats in the world. Sailing boat with 90 meter, 90 meters, wow. 80 meters. Uh, the, the yacht, the biggest yacht I work is a 70 meters yacht. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's good. You know, many people who, for example, the sailors said, ah, I don't want to work in motor yachts. My favorite one for sure is sailing boats because it's a bag for this boat. But uh, it's a good experience because it's other way to work. You know, it's different. You can work hard for the people really like straight and be nice you also too, depending what you want in life. Now I'm more, I more chill, no, like I mean, not chill because you see, I work a lot. Yeah, but you but stay stable because the boat is, is in good shape. Yeah, in good shape. Yeah, I know everything. So I have, you know, I, I coordinate a lot of job from the engineering here. So I also have a little bit of deal with the deck hands. Now is me to coordinate a little bit the job of the deck hand. So for me, it's good deal. I like to be on 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 the how I say this on the control of the things for me is interesting. <laughs> ah, I'm not bad. Come on, I just said, oh, I need to do this, and I let you do. You know that. I make sure you know how to do. And sure, it's sure. No, I've been learning a lot, and thank you for that. Man, we, we learn day, together every day, every, day, every day. You know, in the boat, every day you're learning. You know, every day. The good thing is of this. This, this job is this, you know, maybe I have the best opportunity to sail in the world and meet in places in the world as, if, as different of the other travels. So normally you need to buy your ticket to go for a place, we stay maybe one mount, one mount uh, or maybe less, but you go for one city, we stay for there, but in the boat, you, you, you properly know the culture of the country. For example, now I just stay for one year in, in French Polynesia, and then in one year in French Polynesia, you can 
you go eat the, the food for the people, you go learn the language, you go learn the culture. For you me, make the friends. best. Yeah, I, miss, I have friends for all my life in many different countries. And then also because heavy people from all the gap of age. You have people start with 19 years, 18 years old, and heavy people, uh, as we, we friend here, you know, have just made 50 years old. And then it's good, you know, you, you have the opportunity for everybody. Well, I come for the boat, for working a boat because I really love this kind of job. Since I was young, I said, ah, oh, I go be a captain, I go be a captain. But it's because I travel. I think uh, exactly this we're talking about. I travel, I meet people, and then learning a lot. And one of the things about working a boat is exactly this about learning. Because in the middle of the ocean, you don't have, a, you, you can't call a mechanic and say, hey, come here to help me. Or you're learning, or you can be in trouble. Thank you so much, man. It has been really good. One last question is, what advice would you give to someone that wants to start in this thing, in this career? Everything you're gonna do, do with love, you know? You need to dedicate it. You know, I don't. I'm not here for money. I'm not here for I don't have because I don't have the other option in my life. I come for this the boat life for the sea because I really love what I do. You can also come for money, but dedicated. You know, uh, give you the first step. Study the situation. You want to be a deckhand. Study how be deckhand. I think now you can have some links links for the people with the information in your page, but. Uh, it's not just doing this, instead what you need to learn, including when you, you, you're still working. You are there, you, you are deck hand in a boat, how I can make my, my job better, you know, how I can improve. This is what, what go make you big, the, give you the biggest steps in your career, so. Never give up, you know, like uh, sometimes you, you go start, you go make your duck do, walk, for one day, two days, ten days, and you don't gonna find nothing. Visit the agents, let your CV be always polite, but never give up, and then you go have one good opportunity, you know. Make with love, dedicated, you know. This is the most important. Doesn't matter the position you're gonna work. So, it's my concern. It's what I get for me every day, you know. Thanks so much, man. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you for the opportunity to sail with you guys. For me, uh, we meet there in Caribbean, and I'm really happy for that. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. We end up here in Australia together. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. That's a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any further questions, please drop your question in the comments. We'll be super glad to answer it. And we are very, very happy to announce you guys that we won the Uman Sales competition. So we got two brand new sales for Unforgettable. I'm so excited. I'm so, I want to go get back to the boat just to have these new sales. Yeah, they'll be featuring Unforgettable soon. And thank you. That's only thanks to our amazing community, a huge support we had, everybody sharing and asking for other people votes. They were, thousands yeah. of people involved and we are super, super stoked about it and thank you to Uman Sales as well to organize this contest. Yeah, just for people that uh, don't know what we're talking about, it was a photo contest on Instagram and we were we were really happy that we win it and with the help of our crew, otherwise it wouldn't be possible. So thank you so, so much, guys. You are amazing. You are incredible. We are really happy. Yes. This is our sales, like everybody's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And if you're new here, please subscribe to our channel and leave your thumbs up to this video. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye.